In 1951, General Douglas MacArthur challenged United Nations rules of engagement in Korea. He believed they put American interests and American fighting men in unnecessary danger. The historical record proves that MacArthur was right, but the dangers have increased with virtually no further opposition until now. Forty-four years later, another soldier is decisively questioning orders from Commander-in-Chief Clinton. This time, the President's opponent is not a famous general, but a young E-4 whose popular support is beginning to rival that of some movie stars and political candidates. T-shirts and radio ballads celebrate the courage of the Army medic who stood alone to question the legality of an order to surrender his U.S. military status to serve under U.N. command. Michael Yu was seeking neither celebrity status nor a confrontation with the president. But in simply attempting to honor his oath of duty, he has stumbled onto both. And the administration's approach to the exploding Michael Yu controversy is the same as it was in Douglas MacArthur's day. Answer none of the questions and get rid of the question. In early 1996, Michael New was forced out of the army on a bad conduct discharge. The judge at the court-martial refused to hear evidence that proved Michael New was acting honorably, legally, and with a moral responsibility that must be exercised by every soldier. And so a model soldier was slapped with a ruthlessly unjust conviction that appears to be a warning to any who question the authority or the actions of the United Nations. Michael New will appeal his conviction in order to clear his name. In so doing, his case will force into public record startling information that has been hidden from the American people for almost half a century. Michael New grew up as an average, quiet, unassuming American boy. Missionary travels with a large family exposed him to foreign cultures that taught him appreciation for American culture. From his homeschooling curriculum, he apparently learned details of American history and government that seemed to have vanished from stateside classrooms. New joined the U.S. Army in 1993 three days before Bill Clinton began to change military policy and strategy. New stood out in several ways, but it was especially evident that he had a well-developed allegiance to uniquely American ideals. To New's superiors, both on and off the field, it was clear that Michael New held somewhat outdated views of duty, honor, and country, but these views made him a model soldier, and he was decorated for exemplary service. New's legal ordeal began shortly after Independence Day, 1995, when he learned that his unit might be ordered to the Balkans, compelled to go as mercenaries, as UN personnel, in UN uniforms, under foreign command. New expressed his concerns about the legality of such orders, and was at first ridiculed, then threatened to conform or face court-martial. When New appeared unfazed by the threat of court-martial, he was curtly advised to review U.S. constitutional law and the U.N. Charter. On September 21, 1995, New respectfully submitted his findings and position to his superiors in writing, asking them in turn for written explanations so he could review the unusual order and strive to obey it. The only justification provided by the Army was a verbal briefing by an army lawyer designed to address concerns of News fellow soldiers. Immediately after the briefing, the commander gave the fateful order to Michael New and 550 others. The battalion formation, eight days later, would be in UN uniform. Our battalion was called in for an information briefing. Um, this was a briefing on the legal basis for deployment and uh, where the United Nations insignia um, now I understand ours was the only unit to have this before we deployed over there. That was probably due in part to me. But um, in 
during this briefing, he just gave a, uh, a broad overview of what uh, what the army thought was the legal justification, including things like the president says so, therefore, therefore it is. Uh, and when it came up to the question of why did we wear U United Nations insignia, uh, his rather flippant answer was simply because they look fabulous. And I didn't think that was very funny. Because they look fabulous. A mocking and rather cruel answer to a young man facing court-martial, jail, a bad conduct discharge, and a life-offering circumstance. With no written response from the Army, New began discussing the position with Kentucky attorney Ron Ray, a former Marine colonel and Deputy Assistant Secretary of Defense. I fully intend to obey all lawful orders. Right? Understandable. Okay. Um, the second point being that uh, I interpret the wearing of the uniform or the accoutrements of the uniform as as a sign of allegiance and faithfulness to the authority or power that it represents. Right. Okay. Uh, third point was that I'm not trying to avoid a difficult or dangerous assignment and get out of the Army. I served in Kuwait. Ray assured you that his position carried the weight of law and that the Army's position seemed to rest not on the law but was driven by raw political power, constitutional manipulation, and sheer intimidation. On October 10, Michael New faced a tremendous amount of intimidation. The UN had delivered the controversial blue uniforms to every soldier in Michael's unit, and all fell into formation as ordered by Commander-in-Chief Clinton. All except one. Army Specialist New reported for duty at 0900 in the battle dress uniform of the United States Army. I showed up about 10 minutes before the formation was to actually take place and uh, I was the only one wearing a green uniform and uh, everybody looked at me funny and my squad leader asked me if I knew what the uh, prescribed uniform was for that formation uh, and I told him yes and he said well I'm going to give you another chance to put it on and I told him sorry I'm not going to do this on and he said okay and before he called everybody to attention my squad leader called me out of ranks and, and took me back inside the building and uh, he took me to the captain who read me my rights. Uh, from there I was turned over back to my original captain and uh, he also read me my rights and from there I kind of went, the, went up the chain of command to the colonel. Farther up the chain of command there was no small amount of confusion about what to do with Specialist New. He volunteered to be transferred quietly to another unit, but it was the Army's decision to make an example of New and to pursue a disciplinary bad conduct discharge. To keep the proceedings a matter of public record, New asked for public proceedings, knowing full well that he could go to prison and be forever forbidden from completing a promising military career. I would rather have a clear conscience and be in trouble or be being punished for it than to escape scot-free and, and, and feel guilty. Michael's parents were surprised by how quickly Michael came to a decision without any